Yesterday morning, we awoke to pictures, to children, foaming at the mouth, suffering convulsions, being carried in the arms of desperate parents. We saw rows of lifeless bodies, some still in diapers, some with visible scars of a chemical weapons attack. Look at those pictures. We cannot close our eyes to those pictures. We not, cannot close our minds of the responsibility to act. We don't yet know everything about yesterday's attack, but there are many things we do know. We know that yesterday's attack bears all the hallmarks of the Assad regime's use of chemical weapons. We know that Assad had used these weapons against the Syrian people before. That was confirmed by this council's own independent team of investigators. We know that yesterday's attack was a new low, even for the barbaric Assad regime. Evidence reported from the scene indicates that Assad is now using even more lethal chemical agents than he did before. The gas that fell out of the sky yesterday was more deadly, leaving men, women, the elderly, and children gasping for their very last breath. And as first responders, doctors, and nurses rushed to help the victims, a second round of bombs rained down. They died in the same slow, horrendous manner as the civilians they were trying to save. We all also know this. Just a few weeks ago, this council attempted to hold Assad accountable for suffocating his own people to death with toxic chemicals. Russia stood in the way of this accountability. They made an unconscionable choice. They chose to close their eyes to the barbarity. They defied the conscience of the world. Russia cannot escape responsibility for this. In fact, if Russia had been fulfilling its responsibility, there would not even be any chemical weapons left for the Syrian regime to use. There is one more thing we know. We know that if nothing is done, these attacks will continue. Assad has no incentive to stop using chemical weapons as long as Russia continues to protect his regime from consequences. I implore my colleagues to take a hard look at their words in this council. We regularly repeat tired talking points in support of a peace process that is regularly undermined by the Assad regime. Time and time again, Russia uses the same false narrative to deflect attention from their, from their allies in Damascus. Time and time again, without any factual basis, Russia attempts to place blame on others. There is an obvious truth here that must be spoken. The truth is that Assad, Russia, and Iran have no interest in peace. The illegitimate Syrian government, led by a man with no conscience, has committed untold atrocities against his people for more than six years. Assad has made it clear that he doesn't want to take part in a meaningful political process. Iran has reinforced Assad's military, and Russia has shielded Assad from UN sanctions. If Russia has the influence in Syria that it claims to have, we need to see them use it. We need to see them put an end to these horrific acts. How many more children have to die before Russia cares? Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.